Abortion happens every day. Millions of people around the world will have an abortion each year. But the majority of those people will never talk about their abortion experiences. What if millions of people broke their silence and told the truth about their lives and their choices? We also rarely hear from those who work in clinics providing abortion care. What if we understood more about the people who dedicate their lives to that work? This episode of The Abortion Diary is in collaboration with the Abortion Care Network and was recorded at their 2019 annual conference. This interview is part of a series of interviews with abortion care providers that will be posted on the Abortion Diary podcast throughout the year. This is Melissa Madera in Austin, Texas, and you're listening to the Abortion Diary podcast. These are the stories we share. My name is Leah Copeland, and I'm the program director at Maine Family Planning. I came into healthcare about 20 plus, 25 years ago, working at a Planned Parenthood, and um, got very interested in reproductive health, and so went and became a nurse, and then went back to school to become a nurse midwife, worked as a labor and delivery nurse for a while, delivered babies as a nurse midwife, then I actually taught obstetrical nursing in a um, nursing school, and then I joined Maine Family Planning about four years ago, originally to run the entire abortion services, um, but I've taken on some other projects as well over the years, but I kind of oversee abortion services for our main clinic and then our, all our telehealth abortion services. What drew you to abortion care? Was it like a trajectory of path that you were on or one that was random? That is a great question because I actually had a very different career path when I was in college originally, and I was sort of headed in that direction and then was headed to graduate school and at the last minute was like, wait, I don't want to do this anymore, and um, deferred my admissions for graduate school and then had this sort of like moment of like, okay, now I could do absolutely anything I want to. Like what, at the time, I was like hostessing at a waffle restaurant. <laughs> and I was like, I could do anything I want. What's it going to be? And I remember exactly where I was when I just sort of had this moment of like, I really want to work in women's health. And I didn't know very much about it. But what do most people know when they're in their early 20s is Planned Parenthood. So I just, this was pre-internet. So I called the Planned Parenthood where I was living in, at the time in Chicago and uh, started volunteering. And eventually got hired for a position and worked there. And then that sort of sparked my interest in actually becoming a healthcare provider. So, um, yeah, so I just kind of all of a sudden knew that's what I wanted to do. And then 25 years later, it's pretty much all I've ever done. What do you love about this work? Well, I think having worked with folks throughout so many different experiences from birth, being with people in their, at their births, um, through decisions around contraception, everything, sexuality, education. I just, it feels so normal. This feels like such a normal part of the trajectory of one's life around sexuality and health. Um, it was funny, when I first came back to abortion care at this job, very early on, I happened to have one of the patients who was somebody whose baby I had delivered. And she looked at me almost like, oh, my God, like, did you get fired from your job as a midwife or something? Like, she almost seemed like she couldn't, like, integrate that I could have chosen this work after being a midwife. And and I was like, this is all part of life for folks. And this is all part of, you know, this is, it's, it's all the same to me. And just being able to be with people at any of these times and, and just kind of be with them during these times that are vulnerable times and challenging times and powerful times and all of those things together. And just being part of that, it's like, it's kind of really an honor to be part of that. Just like being at somebody's birth, you know, feels very much like, wow, I have like the privilege of being there at this very intimate moment and this really incredible moment. And I feel the same way about sitting there and talking to someone who's scared or sad or doesn't know what to expect or feels super empowered and comes in like I'm having an abortion and, you know, just being with them at, this, at that time and, you know, um, being able to just kind of be a guide through that experience. What are you really proud of? I think what I'm really proud of is how amazing our clinic is and our staff is. And I think this is, um, you know, I don't think it's unique 
in abortion work, especially in independent clinics. You know, I think that no, nobody knows it unless you work in an abortion clinic, but like how amazingly committed folks are who work in these clinics. Um, you do not do this for the money. Uh, and, you know, the nurses that we have and the counselors, they obviously could make more money at other jobs. Um, but they do it because of their passion about the work. And I think that's really unique to have um, a, a job that that's true. Where everybody there is just so passionate, believes in it, and wants to be part of this bigger mission of just creating access for people to get the health care that they need. I often work in the recovery room at our clinic, and it's a very common experience that someone will say, I just, I can't believe how nice everybody is here. And they're really stunned. And I think for a lot of people, it's the best healthcare experience they've ever had um, because they're treated with dignity from the moment they walk in, from the person who greets them at the front desk with a big smile and says, hey, good morning, you're here to check in. And I think they expect to come in and, and be like, so I guess you're here for an abortion. You know, like they expect to come in almost and be shamed or to feel or they're supposed to feel bad or or judge and I think sometimes just saying hey good morning how are you doing checking in and and just normalizing it from the beginning and then as they meet so many different people throughout the day the person who checks them in the person who does you know goes over the informed consent or does their labs the physician the nurse in the room with them the person in the recovery each person just treats them with dignity and respect and since we know that a lot of these folks are already marginalized and already because we know that abortion is concentrated in folks who tend to be um, lower income, then for them to have that kind of health care experience where they are treated with dignity. Um, and we see that with the folks who are using opiates or, or have other um, challenges where they, again, have often been met with so much stigma in the healthcare system. And we're just like, hey, you're here for an abortion. Great. How can we help you? How can we make your day? go okay for you. And so I just love that. I love being part of an organization where we are doing amazing work and making a difference in people's lives. What's really hard about the work you do? Um, I mean, I think that a lot of what's hard is actually the external forces around us. Um, the not enough money, <laughs> the, um, you know, we, I practice in Maine where we actually have fairly good we're in a fairly good state as far as abortion is concerned but still combating the stigma and having the patient who does drive through the protesters and comes in who's really shaken up and crying and you know just having to deal with all of that is so hard for folks and so I think that that's one thing that's really hard. It's just the generalized stigma and shame. And, you know, there's still people in my life who I don't even tell exactly what I do. You know, I say I work in women's health or, you know, I don't, I don't, I can't necessarily be out about the kind of work I do. And I try more and more to just sort of be, un, as I say, unapologetically pro-abortion, which is what I am. But it's sometimes in certain times, it's like, that's a harder thing to talk about. So I think that's really hard is just you know, I wish we could just give everybody, everybody who wanted an abortion could get an abortion for free whenever they wanted. Like, it just seems so simple. It's normal health care, but it's it's hard that that's not the case. So we know that people in the world don't know very much about abortion or about abortion providers, especially independent abortion providers. Right? They think Planned Parenthood, but they don't think about Indies. Um, if you could tell people out there something, what, what would it be? About Indies. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it's like everything that sort of this movement for local and independent, um, like we want in our bookstores, like we want in our food and all of these things. Like there is something about these independent clinics that are in their communities and know their communities. And they're making decisions about what services to offer and how to offer those services and how to reach folks because they know the community. And I think that's really different than a Planned Parenthood that, you know, maybe has is beholden in some ways to the national, um, to the federation. But, you know, I, the work that they do is amazing as well. I just think that there's something about the independent piece that allows us to really say, hey, we're going to do it this way because we know that this is going to work for our patients. And I think it works, you know. I mean, I think for the most part, independent clinics, you know, people feel very good about their experiences there. And and they remember that, you know, I mean, I think that 
again, like those times that can feel really pivotal in your life. Like you remember if somebody looks at you funny or if somebody says something silly or, or, you know, or if you feel judged, you carry that with you forever. And so I think it's so key to be part of an organization and a movement where we care so much about our community and the folks we serve. So this is your first meeting. Yes. But um, how long have you been a member of ACN? Uh, I guess probably about three years, three and a half years maybe. We became a member because someone who worked at our organization came to work for ACN. And I, I didn't know so much about it. I'd heard about it, but um, when I, I was new to the job, so I just kind of didn't know the landscape very well. I knew NAF right away, but I didn't know ACN. And so she came to work at ACN, and I was like, oh, ACN, we should join ACN. And so um, basically just joined it. And uh, again, just kind of didn't exactly know what it was, but was really excited to learn more about it. What do you value about being an ACN member? Well, I think, again, this place, this platform for for folks who work in independent clinics is so key because our challenges are unique. Um, and I think, you know, having the support of that community, I mean, to be in this space and kind of know anyone I bump into in the bathroom or see or sit down next to, like, they get me, they get my work. And that feels so unique and so relaxing to just be able to be with people who just know you, even if you've never met them before. I feel like at this conference, and this is my first time coming again, like you can just sort of that unapologetically pro-abortion, like there's not many spaces that you can actually be that way. And I think it's really needed. And I wish that I wish that every single staff member I had could come to this conference. Like, I wish, like, that would be my dream is that I could say, hey, we're all taking time off and we're all going to be in this space together and just see what a difference all of us are making in this movement and how many other people are out there doing what we're doing and supporting this work. This is Melissa, your host and founder of The Abortion Diary. For more information about the Abortion Care Network and independent abortion providers, visit their website at abortioncarenetwork.org. We'll be posting more interviews with independent abortion providers throughout the year. For more information about the Abortion Diary podcast, visit us on the web at theabortiondiary.com or email me with your questions or comments at melissa at theabortiondiary.com. If you're a fan of the podcast and would like to help us reach more folks, please subscribe on iTunes and write a review or rate this podcast, even if it's not how you listen. Your reviews and ratings will help us grow in the iTunes rankings and reach more folks. And you know, I also love to hear from you. Remember, you can listen to over 160 abortion stories on our website, SoundCloud, Stitcher Radio, Google Play, or your favorite podcast app. There are more than 140 stories that have yet to be edited and posted on the Abortion Diaries podcast. As always, a special thanks to you for listening.